I printed my design on regular paper first to check and make sure that everything looks good with the placement. So then I printed it on this special paper, which is Inkjet Tyvek. Now, the nice thing about this is you can print it on your regular home inkjet printer. It has a coating on it so that the ink sticks properly. You can see the coated side versus the non-coated side. It looks and feels a little bit different. So you wanna make sure that you're printing onto the coated side of the paper. In my design, these sections are meant to be carbon fiber, so I need to cut that out of the paper. For that, I'm gonna use a craft knife. It's important to have a nice fresh tip on it. So I'm gonna place my ruler just below that line. Leave a bit in the center and leave a bit on each edge. Here I forgot to leave a bit in the center, so I cut that all the way through by mistake, but it'll be okay. It's still attached on the edges. I cut my carbon fiber a little bit bigger than the glass, and you can tape the edges to keep them from fraying. My preference is to use fusible web. So I'm just making sure that the weave is straight. Here's the fusible web. I just cut a strip because I have a big roll. Release sheet and heat tool. You just melt that on. Now I can trim the edges a little more precisely. I'm gonna try this tabletop epoxy from Total Boat this time. I haven't used this particular one before, but I've been happy with the Thickset Fathom. So I figured I'd try one of their other products. To estimate about how much resin I need, I'm gonna just weigh my paper and the carbon fiber. And 16.72, uh, so it's around 20 grams. So I'm gonna need at least 20 grams of resin. I'm gonna spread some on the face here. Oops, that was messy. And this is Teflon coated peel ply. I find this to be the easiest way to do this. Less messy than doing it straight on the glass. You don't have to worry about adding any release agent because this already has the ability to release. This tabletop epoxy is so thick compared to the casting resin that I've been using for a while. So I'm going to just blast this with some heat to get rid of any bubbles that I can. Next up is my carbon fiber, and I wanna give that a quick check over to make sure that there are not any particles on it. There's a little piece of lint from somewhere. So make sure it's clean on both sides. That looks pretty good. All right. I'll add a little more resin now. I might have to mix up more resin, I'm not sure. This resin is so thick, but I need to work on getting it spread out. And I'm making these with one single layer of carbon. You can certainly add as many layers as you like. Two layers is actually, I think, a pretty good thickness, but this is the simplest version with just one layer of twill carbon fiber. Same with my paper. I just want to check and make sure that there's not any pieces of lint or any type of debris on the paper or stray carbon fibers because we don't want those on the white surface. I'm cleaning off my spreader because there were quite a few fibers 
that transferred onto that. So the difference with this paper versus regular paper is that this will keep most of its white coloring. It will stay vibrant. Regular paper just goes basically gray or translucent. Okay, now we're gonna add resin over the top. There's a good chance I'm gonna need to make a little more resin. So it's all spread over the top now, but I'm noticing that the paper hasn't wetted out well from the back. So I guess this thicker resin, I needed to put a thicker layer on there. So I'm gonna lift this up and add in a little more resin at the back. Just go ahead and wet out the paper directly. That's looking about right now. You can see the marble texture there, just the different fibers that make up the Tyvek. Now it's time for the top piece of the Teflon peel ply. So now it's time to remove as much air as possible. And you just roll out the bubbles and any excess resin will also be moved up towards the edges with those air bubbles. And once you stop hearing the air bubbles, pretty much, then that's when you're done. I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side too. Again, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but might as well. Okay. Now this all needs to go onto a flat, rigid surface. So I have pieces of glass for that. But first I need to Remove any dust particles because if you have dust between your peel ply and your glass, that will show up in the finished part. It will look like a small dimple or large dimple depending on the size of particle that was left in there. Same with my glass, just dust it off. My glass has been coated with release wax in case any resin gets um, underneath the peel ply. And then on this side, I have a sticky sheet of contact paper that will also catch, I don't know if you can see it on camera there, but I tend to get <laughs> resin everywhere. So I try to make it as easy as possible to have cleanable surfaces. And I'm gonna tape this down to the peel ply because otherwise that is for sure going to shift while I'm trying to get it into the vacuum bag. And same for the other side. And I press down so that I can feel where the other piece of glass is and get them approximately aligned and then tape that in place also. Got some breather cloth here. I'm gonna place that whole thing into a vacuum bag. This is a converted uh, fish tank pump. I have a video for how to convert that that I'll link in the description. It's a low level of vacuum, but for something like this, it's just fine. Okay, plugged in. Just gonna let it suck the air out. I'll leave it to cure. I'm actually gonna add a heating pad to warm it up a little bit. This room is pretty warm, but 
I think heating up the resin a little bit extra, especially towards the beginning, helps to make it a little less viscous, especially with this tabletop epoxy that's quite thick. And then that'll help excess and air bubbles to flow out a little bit better. There you go. Getting sucked down. That's gonna give us the compression and also help to remove any excess. Ooh, that gets loud. Just gonna let it cure now. It's the next day now, so I'm gonna open this up. See how it turned out. Okay, there's the back, and yeah, I see a little bit of a dry spot there. Some pinholes, not too bad. Probably should have done a little bit of a higher resin content, that might have helped. Yeah, a lot of pinholes in the carbon parts. This actually still feels like it needs to cure for a while longer. It's rather rubbery. The parts with the special paper though, those are good, no issues there. It's just the texture of the carbon makes it more prone to pinholes and dry spots. It's actually not even really dry, it's just low resin content. When making these with a single layer of carbon fiber, you can see through it a little bit. This wasn't the best piece of carbon fiber, honestly. Maybe this was a second quality one, but oops, this aligns here with a cutout there. And you can actually see through it. That's my hand. So if you had another layer of carbon fiber, that would be covered. But with one single layer, you can actually see the weave. The nice thing about making thin cards with just one layer of carbon fiber is they're pretty easy to cut. You can cut it with scissors. I'm gonna do that on these edges that are making the piece not flat because they went over the side of the glass a little bit. And I want this to lie flat while I'm doing the fine tune cutting. If it's a thick card, the best thing to use is a wet saw, but for these thin ones, you can get away with using a knife, a nice sharp blade. Just takes a couple of passes. And that actually creates a really nice edge. I think I need a fresh blade. For the final cut on each one, you can either use a clear ruler and align that and just be careful not to cut into the plastic. What I'm doing here is aligning it to the lines on my cutting mat. This is supposed to be two inches tall. Because remember, this isn't the line here. I overcut that because I wanted to be able to make the final measurement after I've already cut off the bottom edge. Now I just align with the two inch mark on my mat. Just take a couple passes. So the edges need a quick run over with a sanding block just to make sure there's nothing sharp and I normally round the corners just a tiny bit too but basically that's it you can add another layer of resin on top to fix some of the pinholes you would just spread a little resin roll on the Teflon peel ply again let that cure and then peel it off I've done that before on things and it usually works but uh, ideally, I mean, I just need to find the right resin quantity and type of resin to not get the pinholes in the first place. Not too bad, though. There was one that had a little dry spot on this one here. I don't know if you can even see it on camera. And the light hits it just right this corner of the papers. Not fully soaked. There it was. Yeah, 
See right here. That was the only place where the paper was dry. It was really just pinholes in the carbon. Maybe because there was a lot of air in the resin. I don't know. Just got a couple more cards to do, but that's the process and it needs to be fine tuned a little bit. Of course, you can do any size shape you want, just keeping in mind you want to be able to easily cut out the lines in your paper. So you don't want anything too complicated there. If you're going to be making, you know, any kind of quantity. And same with uh, the carbon shape. If you were wanting to cut a circle out, you know, you'd probably need to use a CNC for that. I don't think you'd have a good time trying to do that by hand. But straight lines, pretty easy.